Dear saints of God, allow me to bring my greetings to you through a friend of mine. And dear friend, I'm ambushing you by take heart and courage to greet the people on my behalf and on your behalf. The name of that friend of mine is Elder Elkana Kirosi. Uh, I, I, I have ambushed him, but he won't kill me. He is saluted from the back, wave back too. Thank you so much for accepting my ambush. So when we meet on the other side, outside this building, uh, we will fight there, but peacefully. Uh, allow me to begin by saying that um, the voice of prophecy, I want to give a very, very brief background on that one. The voice of prophecy is a ministry that is concerned with broadcasting the gospel of salvation through media. It uses all media facilities and available. It uses radio, television, uses satellite print, and the internet websites. It's not only through media that it is ministering to the world, it is also accomplishing God's commission in bringing hope to broken people and guiding Christians in daily living through evangelistic meetings. Its messages focus on God's love and the soon return of Christ. It is sponsored by the General Conference and is supported mainly by direct uh, contributions. A brief history is that the voice of prophecy was started in Glendale, Los Angeles, California, by its founder, Pastor Harold Marshall Sylvester Richards, who was born August 28, 1894. Pastor Richards tried his hand on radio in 1926. By this time, radio had been invented, and he observed how it was used to pass information to the audience. And therefore, he thought also that if we can use it to proclaim the message of God, and therefore, he could borrow some time from the local radio stations, and these stations donated most of this time as free because he was talking to the public. So deeply convinced that the gospel should be preached to millions by radio and encouraged by his friends Harold Young and the Grand Luther Richards set out to establish a regular broadcast. The date was October 19, 1929. At this time, the broadcast program was called the Tabernacle of the Air. There was a choir, a vocal quartet known as the Lone Star Four, which consisted of three brothers and their friend, Louis Wald and Wesley Crane and their friend, Ray Montana. In 1937, the Pacific Union Conference, under the leadership of her president, Pastor Glenn Kalishins, assumed the sponsorship of the broadcast over the Don D Network, and then the name of the broadcast was now changed from the Tabernacle of the Air to the Voice of Prophecy. And the Lone Star 4 Quartet, the name was changed from Lone Star 4 to the King's Herods. So in 1941, the General Conference at the Autumn Council took action to make the Voice of Prophecy a national broadcast underwritten by the Union Conferences of North America. So from that small beginning, the Voice of Prophets grew into a globe cycling ministry that today includes gospel messages in dozens of languages on over 1,500 radio stations. The Voice of Prophets Bible Correspondence School in 1942, after a month of the nation, nationwide broadcasting, the first Voice of Prophets free Bible lessons were introduced on the radio audience. 
by one associate speaker for this data one. In the first month, more than 2,000 listeners were enrolled, and for the next eight months, 60,000 had enrolled. The ministry today is the largest of its kind. It offers free lessons in 80 languages and over 127 dialects. In here, where we are now at home, in the East African Union or yeah, the, the, the entire region Kenya involved, the Voice of Prophets Correspondent School in East Africa was started in 1954. It was founded by Pastor Robert Willand, by then the president of Central Kenya Field, which is now the Central Kenya Conference, which was organized in 1953, and the late Pastor Andrew Gademia. The two put together the first Kikuyu lessons, which were called Mugambo Wauradi. This happened because of the Maumau pricing, which had brought about the state of emergency in the country. And therefore, it was not his then to hold public meetings, especially in central Kenya. Therefore, they came up with this program of bringing the lessons into Kenya because South Africa was the headquarters of the voice prophets in Africa, and the correspondences were done you know, from South Africa, people are getting lessons uh, from that point of view. So the first convert was Brother Njaga Karanja, who was the first convert of the VOP lessons. At that time, there was a radio broadcast, and the late Pastor Pamina Sinduke was serving as the radio speaker. The radio, the voice of prophecy, took place from Kar Karura, 1954, 1957, and then later in 1957, the Central Kenya handed over the Voice of Prophets program to the Union, then the operations were conducted at Vanga Road from 1957 to 1962, and then in 1963, the Voice of Prophets Bible School was moved from Vanga Road to Karura, where its current headquarters are located. That is a brief on the voice of prophecy. The global mission of the voice of prophecy is to proclaim the everlasting gospel of Christ, leading people to accept Jesus as their personal savior, calling them to unite with his church and nurturing them in preparation for his soon return. The Seventh-day Adventist church was brought into existence to proclaim five fundamental beliefs. There are 28, but of the 28, there are five which are major, where the 23 are anchored. Then they make 28. The first one was the second coming of Christ. The second one was the Sabbath, which separates true worshipers from false worshipers. The third one was the sanctuary message, which is the interceding priestly ministry, work of Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary. The fourth was the incarnation of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. And the fifth is the creation of the world in six literal days and the other teachings that are meant to prepare us for translation from sinners into saints, living with God through the eternal ages. When Jesus was about to accomplish his ministry, he spoke about his going to heaven and coming back again. John 14, 1 to 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I could have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Matthew 26, 29, when instituting the Lord's Supper, Christ said, But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After his resurrection, Christ gathered his disciples, 11 of them now, because Judas had committed suicide and they had died. He was no longer there. And then he gave what has come to be called the Great Commission, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and the Lord am with you always, even to the end of the age. When Christ was speaking to the disciples that go and make all nations, they were 11, there were no cars, there were no planes. How could they make it to the entire world? In mind, God who is eternal, the voice of prophecy was already in the mind of God that this could be one of the instruments that will ensure the messages go to the entire world. So this message of the second coming was to form the core of evangelism in soul winning to the Lord. The people of the world have been informed that Jesus is coming again, not to die as a, rans a ransom, but now as King of kings and Lord of lords. Isaiah 6, verse 8, the, the word says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. The topic of our sermon today following shortly is entitled, Whom shall I send, shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, before your hands we come, as now we divulge into your holy word, may the Holy Spirit guide our poor minds to receive the concepts you have given there for our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beginning with the early church, before the soul winning went out to evangelize carrying Christian message, there were preparations that were needed to be made. They were going to battle it out with the devil and his angels and his agents. They can't go in a haphazard manner. Thorough preparations were needed in order to counter the attack. Jesus knew his enemy better. Even before the foundations of the world were laid, as Revelation 12, 7 to 10 tells us, he knew the devil is a fighter, and for one to go out and battle it out with him, there must be thorough preparation. Acts chapter 1, the Bible says in verses 3 and 4, this is when Jesus took time with his disciples, giving them instructions on the heavenly kingdom. And he gave them a stern warning not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father was the Holy Spirit. In the same way, any time we intend to go out, we must wait for the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying we stay here like that time, but it simply means how much are we prepared. One major strategy about the preparation towards witnessing was waiting. What were they to wait for? They were to wait for the promise of the Father. What was the promise of the Father? The outpouring of the comforter, the advocate, who was the Holy Spirit. Here was a clear indication, as per the words of Christ, dear people of God, that without the Holy Spirit, they are going out to witness and win souls was but an exercise of utility. So in the course of waiting, the disciples went to Jerusalem from Mount Olivet. So, and as they entered there, they went in the upper room where they were staying. The disciples now were Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, not Judas Iscariot. They continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women who were there also and made the matter of Jesus with his brothers. There was deep soul searching going on. They petitioned. They persevered. They were unanimous. They prayed with one accord. Here we see that prayer was a major strategy in preparation for witnessing. Prayer gave birth to several positive spiritual fruits. It removed any jealousy from among them. It removed any dissensions from among them. It removed any bitterness from among them. It removed any rivalry for supremacy from among them. It removed any selfish characteristics from among them. Meaning, dear brothers and sisters, if these things are among us, 
then we are not witnessing. Yes, we may come to church, we may sit here, we may do whatever, but if these elements, elements of jealousy, elements of dissension, bitterness, rivalry, selfish characteristics, if they are among us, then we are here for nothing, wasting time, we are going nowhere. At the fullness of time, when the promise was fulfilled, they were all of one accord. They were all of one accord, dear people of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all with one accord. They were together, ready to go out and witness. Because of their preparedness, when they went out, what were the results of such a kind of witnessing? Immediately, the first Christians received the Holy Spirit. They went out to evangelize. Peter took the stage to preach the word of God, which touched the hearts of the listeners, forcing them to take action. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the disciples, men and the brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then those who gladly received his word, that is Acts chapter 2, I'm reading, verse 37, 38, and 41. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day alone, about 3,000 souls were added to them. May I say something here, dear people of God? The Bible is saying, Peter and all others, Peter led it out, and they preached, and 3,000 came. Now, you never see where people was, where Peter, for example, was bragging and saying, I preached the word of God, and the spirit of God was with me. And 3,000 people came out of my preaching. The arrogance we witness in many of us today. We say, I went to Mukuru Kwanjenga, and I was there for a whole week. Let me tell you, people of God, I preached there, and the people were shocked. And the people came to the Lord, and I baptized a hundred people. Arrogance of the highest order. The Bible is saying people were touched, and it is the people who are sick. What do we do now? Repent and be baptized. The early church succeeded in her mission of going into the world. Why? Because it continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and the fellowship. It continued in the prayer. All who believed were together. All who believed had all things in common. The members sold their possessions and the goods and divided among them all as anyone had need. The members were with one accord in the temple. The members had regular visitations. Today, dear people, technology which God has given us for the purpose of enhancing the word of God, we have turned it around, we have made it a God we worship. Today you hear that all what we are, we are going to meet this evening and we are going to meet on what is up. And here is my mother who doesn't know how to read, who doesn't know, who doesn't have a phone. How is she going to be involved in this prayer? Are we serious? Dear saints, gadgets are wonderful, but now they have become a God. Instead of worshiping the God of gadgets, we are worshiping the gadgets of God. In that way, dear saints, we go nowhere. It is good, but let us make sure everybody is on board. In matter salvation, everybody has to be on board. The members received what they were given during visitation periods with gladness and simplicity. The members participated in praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. During the time of Pentecost, there was experienced a spiritual revolution, a spiritual revival. 
coming down to our time now. Whom shall I send? We are now standing at the borders of eternity. Pentecost was an experience of the former reign. The prophet Joel wrote in Joel chapter 2, verse 23, Be glad, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and they will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain, the latter rain, in the first month. It is time that we should awaken everybody to follow on to know the Lord. The latter rain must come to prepare the harvest. The servant of the Lord says the following Ellen White, it is true that in the time of the end, when God's work on in the earth is closing, the honest efforts put forth by consecrated believers under the guidance of the Holy Spirit are to be accomplished by special tokens of divine favor. Under the figure of the early and the latter rain that falls in the eastern lands at seed time and harvest, the Hebrew prophets foretold the bestowal of spiritual grace in extraordinary measure upon God's church. The outpouring of the Spirit in the days of the apostles was the beginning of the early or of former rain, and the glorious was the result. To the end of time, the presence of the Spirit is to abide with the true church. Zechariah chapter 10, the Bible says, verse 1, but near the close of the earth's harvest, as the servant of the Lord continues to say, sorry, but near the close of earth's history, a special bestow of spiritual grace is promised to prepare the church for the coming of the Son of Man. And we are standing at the borders of eternity. We are now standing at the close of earth's harvest. That's where we are standing. And this outpouring of the Spirit is likened to the falling of the latter rain. And it is for this added power that the Christians are to send their petitions to the Lord of the harvest. Zechariah 10, verse 1. In the time of the latter rain, the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. He will cause to come down the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, as we have read in Joel 2.23. Those words are from the Acts of the Apostles, page 5.4 and page 5.5. The question, people of God, is where are we standing now? Where are we standing as Nairobi Central Church? Where are we standing? She continues to say, but unless the members of God's church today have a living connection with the source of all spiritual growth, they will not be ready for the time of reaping. Unless they keep their lamps trimmed and burning, they will fail of receiving added grace in times of special need. It is a serious call, dear saints, unless as members of God's church today, unless we have a living connection with our God, we are not going anywhere. Men and occasion, dear people, let me say it later. If leaders don't enjoy keeping members busy, Satan does. She further says, when the churches are left to inactivity, Satan sees to it that they are employed. He occupies the field and engages the members in lines of work that absorb their energies, destroy spirituality, and cause them to fall as dead weights upon the church. This is why people of God, because we are not connected, when we come here to worship the Lord, when we meet out there and we pack our cars out there, we pull out our mobile phones or our smartphones, and then we begin chatting. We begin saying how it was yesterday, how they did it in certain political meetings, how they put a piece of land somewhere else. That is all we talk out there. You never hear anything talking about how was it yesterday. I made it. You see? You see, Buana? I, you, you saw? Didn't you see? Sabbath morning. Ah! The word of God is saying, unless we sit together 
unless the members are involved, Satan takes over. Now, when Satan takes over, it means we are not going anywhere. Whom shall I send? Who will go on my behalf? Christ is asking. In our SDA church, we have four groups of SDA members. Group number one is called Special Diet Association Members. These are those of us who make sure we eat the right diet and by extension make food a test of faith. Sikuli nyama, sikunyu machani chai, sikunyu kahawa, sikunyu coca-cola, lakini vitina, masengenyo, washerati, chuki, choyo, and much more, they are number one. Special diet association members. It's a group we have in the church. Very particular, even drinking water, they position themselves. They can't simply drink, no. They look at it. They turn the glass round, and then they bring systematically to the mouth. We take it and burn up on here so that water may not fall on his shoot. Group number two, self-driven activity members. These are those of us. Church is nothing to us. They don't come for prayer meetings. They don't attend any seminars. Church is not in our hearts. They give nothing to the work of God. They don't read their Sabbath school lessons. They, they, they make Sabbath school like a social club, Mount Kenya Safari Club, Nairobi Sports Club. We are just spectators. These are self-driven activity members. They do what they want to do. They do what they want to do. Group number three, Social Democratic Alliance members. We look very pious, but very political in church affairs and secular affairs. Nisipo chaguli wa kiongozi, if I'm not elected this year as a church elder, you will see. He said, how are you going to go to the we are the people who do the church. Today, Amaleo, Muse is a Kipisiki, is tomorrow, is a Nandi. Another day is a Jalua. Another day is a Kamba. Another day is Kisi. Another day is Kikui. In the politics, they are the number one. Nani ya mechaguli wa MCA. Nani ya mechaguli wa hii. So, they are ever in this way. This time, eh, hey, muliweka nan treasurer. Ah, treasurer, tuliweka come out. Oh, muliweka come out treasurer. These are the social democratic alliance members. Ever in the church. Outside there is what you hear. Sometimes the question we need to ask ourselves, if we gave this one a Mjalu, we gave this one a Nandi, we gave this one a Kisi, we gave this one a Nandi, we gave this one a whatever it is, what did we give to God? If a Kikuyu has taken head elder, a, 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 a Mjalu has taken treasure, another one has taken this, what has God taken? Social Democratic Alliance members. Then we have group number four. No, Social Democratic Alliance say, if it were not for me, this, this church could not be here. Pastor, let me show you. You see all these things that you see here? If it were not for me, you could, these things could not be here. These people cannot do without me. These fellows here. This church, if I were not here, then we have the Seventh-day Adventist members. These ones are working. They know they are the pilgrims. They read the Bible. They read the spirit of prophecy. They always pray. They have devoted their resources to God's work. The much they are able. They are always awake. The Lord is coming. The question is, of these four groups, where do you fall? Whom shall I send is the question. 
So, of these four groups, where do you fall? There is nothing like sitting on the fence. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, the Bible says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Verse 22, men will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done many wonders in your name? Verse 23, and I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, you workers of iniquity. Depart from me. Whom shall I send? God is looking for a witness in church. He's asking the question, whom shall I send? When Isaiah was ready, and the question came, whom shall I send? Isaiah said, hear my Lord send me. If God were asked to ask the same question this morning, here, who would be ready to say, Lord, hear my send me? If reading the word of God has become a problem, you know people of God, I say, by the way, let me say, today, we don't easily say, open your Bibles. When we, if we are going to, to say that one, we also make sure we include the following. Open your Bibles for those who, who are uh, uh, in the church today, we have two groups. We have analogians and the digitarians. For the analogians, open your Bibles. For digitarians, swipe your gadgets. So we have to know which way do you want to say it. The question is, whom am I, whom shall I send? That's the question, dear people of God. The servant of the Lord says, and the Bible said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will go unless those who do my will. Those only who are constantly receiving the fresh supplies of grace will have power proportionate to their daily need and the ability to use that power. Daily they are improving the opportunities for service that lie within their reach. Daily they are witnessing for the master wherever they may be. You don't have to be pastor to stand here. You don't have to be elder. But wherever you are, in the office where you are working, Kwajuakal where you are working, are you demonstrating for sure that you are working for God? Can you say, here my Lord send me in my mechanic area. Here my Lord send me in my uh, Ukusa Omena area, in my Ukusa Tomatoes area. Can we be able to say, here my Lord send me where I am in my Kinyozi, wherever I am in my salon. Can I be able to say, here my Lord send me. It is not only here, but wherever you are in school, Today, and this, by the way, people of God, there were times when ethics were necessary. For I hear in rumors, the medics, and uh, when I get it wrong, medics will forgive me. The medics have what they call um, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Today in the colleges and the universities, we have STGs, sexually transmitted grades. So the question is, where you are in that university, in that college, Will you be able to say, here my Lord send me? Whom shall I send? Is the question, dear people of God. Are we ready? The purpose of the voice, voice of prophets was, here my send me. Richard has started to date. It is going and going and going. G, are we going? Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. A challenge to us members. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end will come. That is the commission. That is the underlying of everything. And this gospel shall be preached not under this tribe shall lead. Not under this person shall do what? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Whom shall I send? It is the preaching of the gospel 
that will finally usher in the second coming of Christ. This work cannot be accomplished by pastors alone. The work of preaching the gospel cannot be accomplished by pastors alone. The servant of the Lord says, the work of God in this earth can never be finished until the men and the women comprising our church membership rally to the work. Unless men and the women comprising the church membership rally to the work, it cannot be accomplished. And they unite their efforts with those of ministers and the church officers. Many years back, a National Bank of Kenya here in Nairobi, some two ladies went to one of the officers in the bank and they asked him, which church do you go? So he did not understand the meaning of the question. He thought they had gone for some consultation and um, they, they asked them, what do you really mean? They said, wherever we are taken out, for a retreat, all those meetings, you know, those who are taken out to where you work in various places for refreshments, for retreats and such like. When we always we go out, when food is, is given there, we go to serve, you are very selective. You move from one pot to another, from one pan to another, selecting foods. Number two, when we go to Shereke, when we go to rejoice, proper dance and such like, we never see you there. Number three, when you have locked your room where you sleep, you will never open until morning. Meaning, they had learned something. The elder told them, come after three days and I will answer your question. The elder went to look for the voice of prophet's lessons. After three days, he called the ladies and they told them, go and read this. After you finish, you come, I will tell you which church I attend. After they read and finished, they came, to cut the long story short, those ladies became baptized members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They are old, they, they, they left working a long time ago, but they are very active members in their old church. Whom shall I send? That elder answered the call, here my Lord send me in the bank. Not only here, we have to combine forces for us to reach what God wants us to do. Every church should be a training school for Christian workers. Its members should be taught how to give Bible studies, how to best to help the poor and the care for the sick, how to work for the unconverted. Here now comes in handy the voice of prophecy department and the local church Bible school. The church is God's appointed agents of salvation of man. It was organized for service and its mission is to carry the gospel to the entire world. A working church is a living church. A non-working church is a dead church. Which is your church? Which one are you in Europe Central Church? Are you a living church or a dead church? We are built upon as living stones, and every stone is to, to emit light. Why must the church why is the church not involved in witnessing at certain times? There is lack of self-confidence. Members have never been trained. There is unrecognized potential. The people are very potential. They have never been given an opportunity. And some have even never been asked to do anything. That is why the church is not active in witnessing. There is no training, which is very important. There is no motivation, which is very important, and the church is never active, and therefore we are here as stones or as logs that are so heavy, we are not able to do anything. We have fallen, we can't be moved. There is no motivation. The servant of the Lord says, no sooner is one converted than there is born within him a desire to make known to others what a precious friend he has found in Jesus. The saving and the sanctifying truth cannot be shut up in his heart. Dear people of God, the Lord is calling upon each one of his followers to be witnesses. He's calling upon each of his followers to be as his ambassadors. He's calling each one of his followers to be light and salt. He's calling upon each one of his followers 
to be ministers of reconciliation. A thing lacking in many of our churches. Pulling, tearing one another apart for no reason, for the sin, for you don't understand, but people are tearing each other, tearing each other. Nothing like a means of reconciliation. The Lord is calling upon each one of his followers to be collaborators with God. We associate together with God. Remember, witnessing is the response, is the heart's response to love. Because the Bible says, the love of Christ constrains us. Remember, witnessing people of God brings joy to the heart of God. Luke chapter 15 verse 7. There is joy in heaven of one sinner who repents. Witnessing dear saints contributes to spiritual life. God could have reached his object in saving sinners without our aid. But in order for us to develop a character like Christ, we must share in his work. Remember, God is able to accomplish his work. But then, he is a, a, his nature is that he wants to involve us. He wants us to participate. He wants us to rejoice in this work. And therefore, he's saying, I want to enjoy you. That is why he has, he has not sent holy angels to come and do the work. He could have done it, and they could have finished. But he says, no, I want you to participate, my, my people. Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? The Lord is calling upon us. A witnessing church has to demonstrate that it is a body of Christ. There is no one in the church who is not important. There is no one in the church. Everyone in the church of God has a special work to do. However low or in significance, in significance, that person may be. Allow me to use this illustration, people of God. Let me ask a question. A foolish question. How many of you woke up this morning? Nobody woke up? Or oh, you are laughing because everybody's here, meaning, so you are asking, Pastor, don't you see that we woke up? That's why we are. It's a good, it's a good one. He woke up. Number two. Who has ever seen his heart? He in a pump of blood. I may wake up as I am, may I may pick a picture. Who has ever done that? But to remove it. Who has ever seen his kidneys? Removed them and brought them on the table. Who has ever seen his lungs? Removed them and brought them to the table. Remember these things. They are very weak. They are not seen. But without them, you will not survive. It is the same with the church of God. Those ones who are on the floor, remember a number of you in Nairobi and Centrans, you are on the wall. But remember, a wall cannot stand without a floor. So those fellows on the floor are making this church to survive. Like the lungs, like the kidneys, like the liver. Rarely are they chosen anything in the church. Even if they are in a problem, you hear people asking, who is that? You say, ah, there is that mama who is somewhere there. Who is that? Tell us people we know. Who your mama and nanny? Those are the people running this church. Because for them every Friday, after selling their tomatoes, after selling their omena, they calculate their, their, their profit, 10 shillings, one shilling every morning, Sabbath morning, faithfully to the treasurer, they take one shilling. For those of us who matter, we bring 200,000 shillings in the month of March. And for the whole year, brother so and so, you know he helped us a lot. If it were not for him, we could not have this here. Brother, stand and say hi to us. Is your wife here, by the way? Brother, can you say, we, 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 we do all that for the whole year. And they bring something somewhere in the month of September. He brings another 200,000. And when we are in nominations, we went to elect a position. Brother so-and-so, Bila Kupingwa. Who is running the church for 10 months? Those ones on the floor. Get that right. Whom shall I send? Remember, when Jesus 
was wanting to get people to send. He went to the local church. He found none. He went to the field conference. He found none. He went to the union. He found none. He went to the, uh, to the division. He found none. He went to the general conference, which was the Sanhedrin. He found none. He went to the floor, down to the river, and they found some boys who were there, Peter and others, fishing, and said, boys, I have some work for you here. Can you come? They said, ah, we have been in the water for long. Let's fall and find out. These are the fellows. Because of the fellows who were on the floor, we are seated on the chairs this morning here in this night of Central Church. No one is unimportant if there is such a word in the church of God. No one. They are saying the question is, how much are we to do? The church is an army, as an army, should never be off guard, even for a moment. Imagine how one of, of, an, of an army in the battle are asleep when the war is hottest. The army has gone to war. It is asleep more than half, and the war is hottest. What is going to come? The servant of the Lord says, if the church of Christ is careless and unfaithful, far more important consequences are involved. A sleeping army of Christian soldiers, dear saints, the very life of the church depends on her faithfulness in fulfilling the Lord's commission. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. The question is, whom shall I send? May the Lord touch our hearts. May the Lord awaken our minds. May the Lord bring us to our senses, dear Nairobi Central Church, that we answer the call, whom shall I send? So that as the harvest is heavy, we say, as Nairobi Central Church, Lord, we're here ready to be used as reapers to gather in the saints into that eternal home. It's my prayer to all of us in Jesus' name.